Hello everyone and welcome to this third devlog for the cute RPG I'm making using the Gido engine. In this devlog I will be showing you some of the new things I've been working on since the last episode. Like this bunker entrance and its elevator and a basic survival system where you will lose energy as time passes and regain energy by eating different things like these mushrooms. But first let us address the giant elephant in the room. It has been six months since the last devlog. Six months! This really was not the plan. So what happened? Well, nothing really besides, you know, life with kids. Including going to a family summer camp for the first time and competing at a robot competition with our oldest daughter. By the way, we won third place and our daughter also won the award for best video, so that was really cool. When I finally found time to work on the game again, I felt that the Godot project I had made was a bit of a mess. This was understandable as I had very little experience with Godot before I started this project. And after working with Godot for a while, I finally figured out how I can arrange the project in a way that both makes sense in Godot and fit the way I usually work. However, changing what I had made so far to my new structure seemed a bit too complicated. So yes, I ended up making a new Godot project again and re-implemented everything again. But I can tell you now, after working with the new structure for a while, it just fits my development style so well. So I promise you I won't be re-implementing everything from scratch again. I think. After all, the goal is to actually finish this game, right? After getting everything up and running again, I started working on adding more stuff to the world, including this bunker entrance. I especially thought a lot about how to handle transitions in and out of buildings that are located above ground. I could just go with the traditional fade out and fade into a new scene with only the insides of the building and everything blacked out. However, I try not to make too many decisions based solely on how things are usually done in similar games. So instead, I try to imagine how this building is going to be used and what will fit this usage the best. Inside this bunker entrance, there's really only three things you can do. You can read the information screen, use the elevator, or just go back out of the building again. None of these things will take a long time. And when using the elevator, there will be a transition and scene change to the scene below ground. So in most cases, you would end up with two fading and scene changes really close to each other. And I felt that this could feel a bit annoying or clumsy. So I wanted to explore other solutions as well. I then thought about how walking inside buildings was done in the old Fallout games, which are also a huge inspiration for my game. In Fallout 1 and 2, the roof fades out when you go into a building, and I figured that a similar solution might fit the ideas I have for my game as well. To make the roof fade away, my building scene has two separate sprites, one for the outside and one for the inside of the building. This makes it really easy to just use an animation player to fade the outside sprite in and out when needed. To trigger this fading, I then use an Area 2D to keep track of when the player enters and leaves the insides of the building. And yeah, that's pretty much how my roof fading now works. After making the bunker entrance, I then used it to make a generic building scene that other buildings can inherit from. This way, all my buildings will have the same in and out fading. Like this little tent the player starts out with. I really like how this moving in and out of buildings ended up. And I especially like how it's different to moving below ground. So it will be really clear to the player when she is above ground and when she is underground. The only thing I currently think I might change later is moving in and out of the player's home. I might play around with a few options for this later. The next thing I decided to work on was a simple survival system so the player actually has something to do in the game. This included making a time system and this watch to show the time. And I also made a day and night cycle. For the day and night cycle I chose a shader based approach for changing the color of the light during the day. I've worked a lot with shaders before so this way I already know what to do when I want to add other light sources later at some point. 
I then went on to implement an inventory system so the player can look at and use the things she picks up. This required a lot of coding and also figuring out how I wanted to handle communication between the game scene and the GUI. The items in the top bar of the inventory is also shown in the hot bar at the bottom of the screen. The design of the inventory system will probably change a bit when I start adding more features to it. At some point it should also be possible to equip things to both the player and the player's robot, but for now I'm really happy with it. The last thing I then needed to add to my simple survival system was to make the player lose energy as time passes and regain energy by eating stuff. The player's energy system is super simple. The player currently has three variables to keep track of the maximum energy she can have, the player's current energy level and how much energy is used each in-game second. The player then also has a second tick function that is called once for each in-game second that passes. In this function, the player's current energy level is then decreased. I also made the player's speed decrease when the energy is below a certain threshold. And if the energy level gets below zero, a falling asleep animation is played. To regain energy, the player also has an eat function that is called when an edible item is used from the hotbar. One thing I also plan to add is having the robot pick up the player when she has fallen asleep. But this has to wait until I start working on the robot's AI system. And now I think that you are all caught up with all the things that's happened with my little project here during the last 6 months. The next thing I plan to work on is reintroducing the robot system, add more collectible items and automate gathering supplies using the robot. I hope you will like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. And that's all for now, bye!